intricacies. It is still a dependable station in the puzzling universe of interstellar space. This was preceded by an event that has almost become part of NASA's daily routine. The specialists had lost contact with Explorer due to technical issues. Also, this was not the first time they had been compelled to find intelligent fixes to restore contact with the maturing rocket. Eventually, the way to success led through a part that had, in fact, been outdated for quite a long time. And though the backup transmitter, which had not been used since 1981, worked as desired and allowed the space veteran to phone home again. When it's cold outside, it's a smart idea to turn on the heating. Up until this point, so obvious. However, it gets somewhat trickier when the temperatures in the depths of interstellar space need to be turned up, and on a shuttle that has been going through space for almost 50 years. The shuttle has repeatedly drawn attention for its technical illnesses. And so, it happened that what ought to have been a routine task once again led to an unforeseen Explorer 1 issue. After NASA specialists had given the spacecraft the command to activate one of its heaters on October 16th, they were confounded to find, two days later, that the deep space network could no longer detect Explorer 1 signal. The fact that the scientists had to wait 46 hours before this unwanted realization reached them is, again, due to the enormous distance that now exists between Explorer 1 and our natural home. Specifically, since 1977, the probe has been separated from Earth by around 24.7 billion kilometers, and it takes almost 23 hours for a message to traverse that colossal distance. The same period of time is also needed for a response. But what actually happened? Well, Explorer 1 is equipped with an onboard air protection system that reacts independently to issues. This is the case, for example, when the rocket's power supply is overloaded. The air protection system switches off systems that are not essential for the shuttle to work in order to save energy. But clearly, the aforementioned heating command also triggered the air protection system, even though Explorer 1 actually had enough energy to activate this part. For better understanding, it should be briefly mentioned here that Explorer 1 usually communicates with Earth through a so-called X-band radio transmitter, named after its specific frequency. Following the loss of contact, the specialists correctly assumed that the air protection system had reduced the rate at which the corresponding transmitter sent its data back. This isn't surprising, as this mode consumes less energy. However, it also changes the X-band signal that the deep space network has to look for. Luckily, NASA engineers were able to identify the signal of Explorer 1 on October 18th. Although Explorer 1 appeared to be in a stable state apart from that, the next issue was not far off. How a 40-year-old backup transmitter helped NASA out of a tight spot. The next day, communication with Explorer 1 actually broke down completely. The flight team suspected that the error-prone system was lurking in the air protection framework again. It's possible the system was triggered once more, turning off the X-band transmitter and instead switching to a second radio transmitter, the S-band. However, this had been in technical retirement for quite some time. Although the S-Band consumes less power than the X-Band, Explorer 1 had not used it to exchange messages with Earth since 1981. A brief historical note. While Explorer 1 has now even passed the boundaries of the solar system, at that time it had just barely explored Saturn and its moons. Incidentally, 1981 was also the year in which U.S. President Ronald Reagan and Pope John Paul II were seriously injured in assassination attempts and in which the current King Charles married a certain Lady Diana. Back to the present. We can see why the S-Band has been outdated for decades. Despite all the energy-saving benefits, it uses a different frequency from the X-Band transmitter, and thus has a much weaker signal. Given the enormous distance, NASA specialists were initially uncertain whether they would even be able to detect the S-Band. Yet, they found it, and then had to decide what steps to take next. Considering the air protection history, Simply switching the X-band back on seemed too risky. This should only be done when the cause of the system being triggered has been clearly identified. However, previous experience has shown that such an error analysis could take weeks or even months. Conclusion This text outlines the intricate challenges faced by NASA in maintaining contact with the aging Explorer 1. Despite its long journey, 
the spacecraft still manages to communicate with Earth thanks to clever engineering and backup systems, though its longevity is a testament to the ingenuity of its creators. Spout changes will no longer help, since, regardless of whether the Explorer 1 antenna is still pointing toward Earth, specialists believe that radio contact will be lost by 2036 at the latest due to the ever-increasing distance. Our specialists expect that your click contact will occur shortly due to the ever-decreasing distance to the subscribe button. So feel free to click that subscribe button now so you never miss a new video from us again. We'll see you soon.